This is a video demonstrating the steps of laparoscopic posterior mesh rectopexy for a patient with complete rectal prolapse. The patient was placed in a low lithotomy position with the monitor on its left side near the foot hand. The surgeon and the camera assistant stand on the right side of the patient and the assistant surgeon stand on the left side of the patient. So after entry, a rolled gauze piece is placed to keep the small bowel loops away. Away. Traction on the sigmoid mesocolon helps to make the peritoneum taut. Incision is made on the peritoneum just above the sacral pomentary and extended inferiorly into the pelvis. Initially, we prefer doing a posterior dissection and the right lateral dissection followed by a left lateral dissection. So, peritoneal incision is extended slightly above the sacral pomentary. We should See that we maintain the plane between the presacral fascia and the rectum. We should not dig deep into the presacral fascia as the chances of injury to the hypogastric nerves as well as the vessels will be more if you dig deep into the presacral fascia. Those are the infrahypogastric nerves which are preserved and also the fascia over the nerves is intact. So the plane between the rectum and the presacral fascia is continued inferiorly into the pelvis. Then after the medial dissection is done, slowly a lateral plane is created to see the ureter. The ureteral gonadal complex is dropped down. That's the bifurcation of the iliacs. You can see the hypogastric nerves there. Proper plane is maintained between the rectum and the presacral fascia. We can also use harmonic shears for this part of the dissection. Dissection is continued until you reach the coccyx and pelvic diaphragm is exposed. Once the posterior dissection is completed, we perform the right lateral dissection and the lateral ligaments are divided. We have to ensure that we divide the lateral ligaments close to the mesorectum in order to avoid the nerves which travels through the pelvic wall. The dissection is continued inferiorly and the peritoneal examination to the rectum gives us the idea of the inferior border of the dissection. Those are the presacral nerves. So the right lateral and posterior dissection is continued. There is a rough curator. You can appreciate the peristalsis of the left ureteral well. Once the posterior and the right lateral dissection is over, the sigmoid colon is flipped to the right side by the assistant surgeon and incision is made on the peritoneum of the left lateral pelvic wall. Care is taken to identify the ureter gonadal complex and it is pushed down. Similar dissection was carried out which was performed on the right side. The left lateral ligaments of the rectum are divided. There is the eye bifurcation there. That's the sacral pomontry. There's the coccyx and the pelvic diaphragm. There's the source major muscle. So this is the completed dissection of the rectum. Once the dissection is complete, a 6 cm into 11 cm polypeplain mesh is placed and fix the two places the sacral pomontry and then just above the coccyx. The flanges of the mesh are sutured 
to the right lateral rectal wall. Care has to be taken that we take only the serosa of the rectum in order to prevent any infection complications in the post operative course. In the post operative course, we have used 20 proline. We can also use 20 ethibon, which has got a good suturing and knotting properties. The flanges of the mesh are sutured, taking apart the mesa rectum and only the serosa of the rectum. So our principle is to first do a posterior dissection then right lateral dissection once the posterior and right lateral dissection is done then we perform the left lateral dissection the dissection is carried out just above the sacral promontory up to the level of pockets and pelvic diaphragm here you can see the mesh is being sutured to the left lateral wall of the rectum taking a part of the presacral fascia also It is very important to maintain the presacral fascia intact in order to reduce injury to the hypogastric nerves as well as to the presacral plexus. So once the mesh is fixed to the sacrum by tackers and to the rectal wall the assistant surgeon pulls the rectum towards him so that the rectum is straight and it is held in position once this is done the peritoneum has to be closed so that the proline mesh which was placed gets covered with the peritoneum this is very important to prevent any internal herniation or small bowel obstruction due to herniation into the space which we have dissected and the mesh is placed we have used 20 proline for rip peritonealization or peritoneal approximation we can also use a pds for peritoneal approximation it is very important to approximate the peritoneum meticulously so that the proline mesh doesn't get exposed minimizing the chances of internal herniation without closure of the peritoneum and also subject to obstruction in the post operative course or in the future there you can see now the rectum is lying straight and fixed well thank you all for watching